in the side of Everything in the ghetto is how it was made to be designed in the process to murder diabetics, eugenics, proctor and gamble, credit, racial science, couldn't Today we're talking about a highly unusual rapper. I know I say that's about a lot of our artists, but this one really takes the cake. While most rappers get into the industry by glorifying money and drugs, Immortal Technique is the polar opposite. A natural bone activist, Technique rose to prominence on the underground as a fierce battle rapper, rapping about topics that are terrifying to the average rapper. Today we'll be talking about none other than Mr. Immortal Technique. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Born around 1978, the man is of incredibly mixed heritage, including Amerindian, Spanish, French and African. He started rapping at the age of 9 years old, but wouldn't take it seriously until he got to high school. Throughout his following 10 years, he was in and out of trouble, getting arrested multiple times before receiving a charge that stuck. Shortly after enrolling in Pennsylvania State University, he was arrested and charged with assault-related offenses, stemming from his involvement in an altercation between fellow students. The charges led to a year-long incarceration, although it should have been longer, according to his official bio. He was facing about 5 to 10 years in prison and has his lawyer to thank for getting him out of that situation. I was born in an Hospital Militar de Lima in a military hospital in Peru. Mm -hmm. And I came here when I was about three. And I always tell people that, you know, there was almost, there was 2,000% inflation. We went through two, three currencies in a few years. And to find peace and quiet, my father decided to move us to Harlem in the 1980s. Wow. <laughs> Immortal Technique used his time behind bars to his benefit. He began to study the lives and teachings of black and Latino revolutionaries like Che Guevara and Malcolm X while writing songs and honing his rap skills. By around 1999, he was out on parole and ready to build a life sharing his mission. As a condition to living with his father after his release, Technique was required to return back to school where he took political science classes in New York for two semesters, further broadening his political views. Unable to find a decent wage paying employment, he worked multiple odd jobs, ones that went nowhere, so he eventually began to sell his music on the streets and rap battle other MCs. By doing this, he built a solid reputation in the underground scene. He won multiple freestyle rap battles and eventually earned bragging rights. By around 2001, Emoto Technique dropped his first album, but he did so in an unorthodox way. Instead of finding distribution through a rap label, Emoto Technique used the money he earned through his rap battles and sold his first album himself. The album was called Revolutionary Volume 1 and came out around 2001. You cannot second guess yourself in these days and times. They're gonna throw whatever they can at you. Critically, the album was surprisingly well received, earning about three to four stars out of five. Naturally, his production quality was not the greatest since he was doing everything himself, but he was praised for his political, lyrical content. The album had many jams like Revolutionary and Positive Balance and contains one of his most well-known tracks, the 10-minute dance with the devil. So Billy started robbing niggas anything he could do get his respect back in the eyes of his crew. If you haven't listened to that song yet, you gotta check it out. It tells the tragic tale of gang initiation with the kind of brutal honesty that even the illest of rappers shy away from. After this album came out, Immortal Technique's fanbase began to spread and he began to gain even more attention in wider hip-hop circles. He battled in 106 and Puck's Freestyle Friday, but unfortunately he lost to Poster Boy. However, the attention Immortal Technique was receiving did not stop after the loss. Monster is on crack. You've been ripping rhymes from a page. Craig Mack, tell your stunt double to get off. Around 2002, he appeared in The Source's Unsigned Hype, a section that brought attention to rappers that were not signed by major labels. Ironically, this usually helped a rapper to get signed, but Tech wanted none of that nonsense and was proudly, stubbornly independent, something that reflected in a lot of his music. The following year, he earned another credit from the magazine, the coveted and far more prestigious honor of hip-hop quotable for the song Industrial Revolution, which appeared on his second album. But we'll get to that in a minute. He is the only rapper in history to have earned the title without being signed, proving more than anything that his skill was undeniable. His second album Revolutionary Volume 2 came out around 2003. It was released in the same manner as the first, but this time he had enough money to promote his singles. 
The singles were Point of No Return and Industrial Revolution, although once again no singles made it to the charts. This is the point of no return, I can never go back. Life without parole, upstate, shackled and trapped. This new album blatantly attacked the US government with a focus on the Bush administration, along with targeting the government. The album also discussed issues like poverty, drug trade, slave labor, censorship, the 9-11 attacks, racism, class struggles, prison and corporate control over the media. Nowadays, most rappers wouldn't dare touch these topics. Actually, a lot of rappers back then were too afraid to touch these topics as well. But Emoto Technique was not scared of the public backlash. His sole mission in life was to put his message out there by any means. Now, my favorite songs on the album were Obnoxious. Get over here, give me some brain. I'll on her face and right after the segment which has an Eminem vibe to it another song called you never know featuring Jean Grey and in my opinion you never know is one of his best works to date and should have been a single she was on her way to becoming a college graduate wouldn't even stop to talk to the average kid just like dance with the devil you never know will make you think it might make you cry either way you can't listen to a song like that and go uh next Sometime after his second album came out, Revolutionary Volume 1 and Revolutionary Volume 2 were re-released through a slightly bigger label in order to acquire a new audience. He then began working on two more albums to be titled The Middle Passage and The Third World. Throughout the next few years, Immortal did not release any albums, but he was by no means sitting on his laurels. Around 2005, he released a song called Bin Laden featuring Mos Def and DJ Green Lantern. The song also had a remix with Chuck D of Public Enemy and KRS One. In both versions, Eminem can be heard, but it was a wasted feature, in my opinion. The same year, Tech appeared in a docudrama titled This Revolution. It was one of the first documentaries he appeared in, and it made people go, "Okay, you actually do what you rap about. I'm, I'm impressed." 2006 marked the release of the song Impeach the President, in which a mortar urged his fans not to vote for George Bush again. By 2008, still inspired to actually make a difference in the world, Tech dropped his highly anticipated third album. It came out five years after his second and was called The Third World. Compared to the AIDS infest, the Caribbean slum, African streets with a passports and American gun. This one was his first to be released through a label and picked at number 99 on the Billboard 200. The album spawned one single called The Third World, and all the money he earned from it was going to be donated to an orphanage in Afghanistan. From there, Immortal continued to immerse himself in charity and activism to a greater extent. Around 2009, a song was leaked called Democratie Fasciste by Brazilian French rapper Rocking Squat and featuring Tech. Genetic tampering, classical sample and remix of the Roman Empire throughout the land again. And around 2010, he was appointed the CEO of Viper Records. Now around 2011, he dropped his last complete work, a compilation album titled The Martyr. It came out for free on Viper Records and had over 1 million downloads in one week. After The Martyr, despite its massive success, Tech just wanted to keep touring and help the world as he went. Around 2012, he appeared in two documentaries titled The Revolution If Immortal Technique and The Art of Rap. Now, after the documentary, Immortal Technique seemed to just disappear. He stopped releasing new music but focused his attention on activism and charity work while still touring as much as he could. Um, I came here because I wanted to discuss uh, more than just uh, criminal justice but I wanted to discuss just justice. His charity work included going to prisons to talk to the youth, working with immigrant right activists, raising money for kids' hospitals in poor regions like Afghanistan, and creating a writing grant program for high school students. Throughout this entire period, he kept a low profile. That's until around 2015, when he got into trouble with the law. That same year, outside of a Santa Ana venue where he was performing, he allegedly robbed and assaulted two men who were selling his merch outside of the venue. According to the story, Tech along with his manager and 10 others confronted them, beat them and stole their wares, cash and cell phones. Charges were then laid and Immortal Technique was arrested. He then posted a $50,000 bail and was out in time to perform his next show. 
my t-shirts outside of concert. See, that is a lie, though. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for bringing that up. This is another fucked up thing that's wrong with rap and battle rap. I was on 257 stations, right? That uh-huh. carried the news of my arrest. Only four of them carried the news of my exoneration. My mm. total thing. Like, wow. dude, I, I hired four lawyers. Mind you, four lawyers. I had a Jewish lawyer, a Swedish lawyer, and two Cuban lawyers. Mm-hmm. It was like a fucking United Nations. Whenever I went to the court, <laughs> I stood up and said, Mr. Cornell's your team ready. We all stood up. We all went up there. And let me tell you something. When you, I'll bring the police report next time I, I come in here. Right. It says the most absurd shit. It says, uh, at the end, no injury is reported. So the, the police report in the beginning says, immortal technique and, and a dozen assailants mercilessly beat down. Mercilessly. People. No injuries reported. So how did I mercilessly be? If but you know, no I can't say that reported. in court. After that, he continued about his business, traveling the world, performing and fighting for what he believed in. And yet, despite his wide travels and status as a rapper, Technique has left behind no offspring. I was born with the disease I inherited from my father. It's called responsibility. It prevents me from dropping seeds in random women and not taking care of children like a man should. When it's time for me to have a family, I intend to dedicate my life to that. It's hard to juggle that as an artist and a revolutionary. Eventually, he decided to return to music and focus on making a difference locally. Around 2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, Tech founded the charity and food initiative Rebel Army Runs. The project donates essential supplies, food and others to neglected communities in New York and LA. Since the charity's inception, it has helped over 10,000 families from Harlem to LA. Around 2020, he mentioned that he was writing a book, although it has yet to materialize, and since 2019, he has been teasing the release of a fourth album called The Middle Passage. When speaking about his musical career, he said the following, I never lost my love for it. I've been still touring. Those five years I didn't make any new music, I did like three or four guest appearances, I did five world tours. So I've always been a global act. I've done every continent except Antarctica. But to come back, I felt like the music was so relevant for this time. I felt like it was either, what am I gonna do with these songs? Throw them away? Or am I gonna put it down and come back? People have been harassing me, nagging me. Now at this point, it seemed like Immortal Technique was about to make a comeback. Except, no album has materialized since then. He did drop a single called Civil War with Brother Ali, Chuck D and Killer Mike around 2022. But as of yet, nothing new has come up. Now, do I think Immortal Technique fell off? I think the answer is no. Immortal was never a guy who cared about the sales, the women, and the money. The man made music to make a difference and chose to actually use his time to practice what he preaches in his music and that's to help as many people as he can. Today, Immortal Technique is still very active and still performs his old music regularly. Tech isn't one to shy away from politics and he still talks about it on Twitter without any filter. On Spotify, he has about 740,000 monthly listeners and his most listened to songs are Dance with the Devil, Point of No Return, Leaving the Past, Obnoxious, and Peruvian Cocaine. I tagged in a gang of stuff this weekend. Um, I was working on a book and uh, finishing a couple of songs that are left for the Middle Passage. And a bunch of people tagged me because of uh, the song that I wrote, Dance with the Devil. And they tagged me because obviously another artist and several other people have um, put forth the topic of like uh, Satanism or, or wickedness in hip hop. Or then there was a video with someone twerking on a devil or something. Um, so when people started asking me about uh, demonic imagery, um, I said to people that the the concept of the record can be anything. You just have to make it tasteful and understanding. You know, it can't just be um, gratuitous violence. There has to be a rationale, a reason, a moral to the story. That's it for me, Sir Boy Ali. What happened to Immortal Tech? In your opinion, let me know down below. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music Tale next time. Peace.